Make your Ayaka busted and I will tell you in the next 30 seconds how. She's the strongest on-field cryo DPS in the game as of now, and can also be used as a burst DPS as well, since she is one of the strongest nukes in the game. Her burst also makes up the majority of her damage. But, Ayaka's charge attacks and elemental skill are very potent as well, and enable her to be a strong on-field DPS. Her signature weapon, the Mist Flitter, is one of the best weapons in the game with insane account value, and can be used on many different characters. It gives Ayaka a massive 30-40% to boost to her damage in various different team comps. But, her free-to-play and low-spender options are decent as well. In terms of artifacts, the Blizzard Strayer set reigns supreme, but there are alternatives for the meantime while you're still farming your ultimate set. Her best teams are Freeze and Mono Cryo. I'm Judas, and that was the Spice. Now, let's get nerdy. Ayaka is special. Not because she's the most front-loaded cryo DPS of excellent capabilities and freeze and mono cryo teams, although that is true, but also for her dashing, infusing, and shield-breaking abilities. Especially the shield-breaking part of her. It is just phenomenal. And since we mentioned her dash ability, it is absolutely mandatory to discuss how you must use it before using her charge attacks to get access to the cryo infusion of her normal attacks. Doing a dash for even a second will give you the effect for as long as 6 seconds. Besides that, it replaces the regular dash and allows you to move very quickly and allows you to build ice bridges across the ocean with some help. Nice. On top of that, you will also apply a lot of cryo in a short time, which allows you to break shields just by coming up and down like a maniac. I mean, you shouldn't spend your time in the abyss doing only that, but it's just funny that it works. And the reason you can get away with that is her A4 passive. That one will refund 10 stamina as long as you're hitting enemies at the end of her dash. Therefore, you can literally abuse and spam her ability. And if, as if that is not enough, you get 18% cryo damage bonus for 10 seconds. Oh my god! Now after that tangent about her dash, let's talk a bit more about her charge attacks. Attack hitbox before we move on. The hitbox enables you to swap enemies who are outside of the regular melee range. It even reaches those who are on different surface levels as well. How high or how low? She can basically hit enemies trapped in Venti's burst, which is rather high. It's definitely got a considerable amount of damage that you should not neglect at all. Especially since she will always weave in some charge attacks no matter her playstyle. Even if you use Ayaka only as a burst support and on-field playstyle as well. They are even more important to help cover her burst downtime. Even though the elemental skill is the least powerful part of Ayaka's kit, it still hits Bruh. hard, and therefore is definitely worth leveling. It should just be done on your way to triple crown her. In general, after leveling all skills equally to 6, we'd want to have her burst leveled up first, then her normal attacks, and then her skill. Like the rest of Ayaka's kit, this ability hits in an AoE fashion. It generates a good 4-5 to five energy particles, which is decent to cover her energy recharge requirements but the cooldown is a bit long with 10 seconds. Activating the elemental skill will also trigger Ayaka's A1 passive. This allows her to do her strikes more motivation by giving her a 30% damage bonus on her normal and charge attacks for 6 seconds. Up to this day, Ayaka is the queen of the hill in terms of cryo DPS, only given a run for her Morabite Ganyu. Her burst is not just pretty to look at, but also pretty broken if you ask me. It comes at a hefty 80 energy cost, but is worth every bit of energy. She unleashes a highly motivated. I am the storm that is in front of her that keeps moving until it hits a frozen enemy or a large monster. This is also one of the big reasons why you want to play freeze with Ayaka. It prevents the burst from overshooting the target while the enemy isn't able to move anyways. In short, it's the duration of 5 seconds, it deals 19 cuts of damage with a final slash dealing even more damage. The combined multiplier is at a huge 2300% of Ayaka's attack if you crown her talent. And yes, it is definitely one of those skills worth crowning. It is easy to dish out 400k and more with it, but that number is not the final limit of her capabilities. You see, when you pair her up with units like Mona, Sucrose, and Diona, then Ayaka can do about 19k per tick before the final bloom cut that will deal 29k. Some quick math will show that the overall damage would be the 405k from her burst alone that I was speaking of. And here comes the funny part. This is not even her best team, and she's only equipped with an Animana Kagiuchi, a 4-star weapon. So she's indeed able to break her limit and deal a lot of damage. And with that, I mean that she has to become nuclear. I am... Atomic. It 
would be amazing if I could, could just melt all those instances of damage. Just imagine how much damage that would add up to be. Unfortunately, Ayaka has standard ICD, which doesn't allow for all of her burst ticks to melt, and only four of them will do so. And when it comes to her charge attacks, only one out of the three will melt, meaning that melt is not an option to consider for Ayaka whenever you're leveling her burst and building her team comp. But honestly, even without melt, Ayaka is still broken because of her burst. That's why leveling her burst should be put before her skill and then her normal attack, since all of Ayaka's damage is front loaded within a five second uptime. Therefore, and after applying the scientific method of research, we conclude that Ayaka is unparalleled under the celestial heavens. But a certain coconut milk provider would disagree. Now how much energy recharge do we need for our Ayaka? Since her burst is the main source of her damage, it is paramount that we satisfy her energy requirements first. Ayaka would prefer around 140% ER if you're running her on misplit or any other high investment weapon, and this ballpark would be considered the most unconditionally comfortable number for her across all of her teams. This is especially true if you're running no over Favonius weapons in her team and are tight on energy particle generation. However, with Favonius users in the party, you may be able to spice up to 120-130% to energy recharge. You may also find that with additional sources of particles such as Sun Shen C1, this number is reduced even further. <laughs> However, on R5 in Imina Kagiuchi, your energy requirements can be dropped all the way down to 110 to 120 percent at worst. It's because the weapon's passive perfectly synergizes with her and absorbs her large energy requirements. Do keep in mind to utilize her elemental skill to create stacks before unleashing her elemental burst. Her energy may end up almost ready for her next rotation immediately. Let's start with the best for your Frost Queen. If you truly love Ayaka, then you'll get her for chosen set, the four-piece Blizzard Strayer set, which can be located at the peak of Vinjigo or find at the strong box at the crafting bench. It is fairly easy to farm since you unlock the domain early on in Dragonspine, and it fits her really well because of the massive 40% free crit rate. It's free real estate. Get whenever you freeze enemies because you want her burst to crit as often as possible. Moreover, you will get an extra 15% crit rate when you put Ayaka in a double cryo team due to cryo resonance, but you will do it anyway for energy recharge purposes, so that means you will need to focus next on crit damage in the substats and attack percent, focusing mostly on ER within substats. Therefore, the ideal artifacts for Ayaka would be attack percent on her sands, cryo damage bonus for the goblet, and crit damage for the circlet if you are out of resin and your local resin dealer is tired of your broke ass and you're not able to get the full set with your desired substats, and you can use a two-piece blizzard or two-piece gladiator slash Siminawa set for cryo damage bonus and attack percent. This is a nice way to increase her burst damage without a four-piece blizzard set. However, do note that anything that is not a four-piece blizzard spare set is simply not ideal. Gladiator and noblesse are okay placeholders until you get the real deal. We can't really talk about her weapons without talking about her best in slot weapon, the Magnificent Mist Splitter. Not only does it provide a good amount of attack stats, but it also significantly increases Ayaka's crit damage by 44%. The weapon's passive also adds on to the overall elemental damage that Ayaka deals with her burst, so investing in this weapon is definitely a good option if you have the primos. But remember, the weapon banner is a scam, and Hoyoverse wants to separate you from your most valuable asset. Another good 5-star weapon for Ayaka is the Hironga Pakufutsu. Ayato probably won't mind if Ayaka borrows it for a spin in the abyss. It gives Ayaka a good crit rate increase of 33%. She can also make use of the elemental damage bonus, but neither me or you will see her fight her way through bosses and mobs with just her normal attacks. So, part of the passive is just wasted on her. Next is a more affordable weapon that can still aid Ayaka in dishing out the damage that she was always destined for, at least to a pretty good degree. I am talking about the Aminoma Kageyuchi Sword. It synergizes wonderfully with her kit and is most likely made with her in mind. It is a craftable weapon in the game but has a nice 55% attack increase while also having a good passive that generates more energy particles, allowing for faster recharge for the burst and as a result a more consistent amount of damage over time. It is a brilliant weapon if you're suffering of energy issues, though do note that it will deal less damage than a mist splitter. Next, you could go for the black sword if you want to pay $10 for battle pass, but it's much inferior to the Aminoma Kageyuchi. The dolphin grade pay to win sword will get you a decent amount of crit rate and a passive that covers the healing needs of your party. Healing 60% of attack is HP whenever you crit, but when you think about it, it doesn't really provide that much value for Ayaka in specific. For healing, you might run her in a team with Kokomi, Shincho, Prototype Amber, Mona, or even Barbara, characters that are necessary for the 
freeze reaction. They already cover the healing part, so Black Sword's passive becomes kind of obsolete, and the crit rate increase that you'll be getting from the sword can be taken already from the Blizzard Strayer set, and the cryo resonance that you'll get by default from running Ayaka at a freeze or mono cryo team comp. Moreover, running Ayaka at a freeze team will have most enemies frozen, as I had stated before, so they won't really be able to hit her, making the need for healing unnecessary. Lastly, you could go for a Harbinger of Dawn Sword for the crit damage that you require, but it will generally have bad scalings with her and her team, since it's a 3-star weapon, but it can also increase crit rate depending on the refinement level, and if you manage to keep Aika's health above 90%, which is aforementioned with the use of healers in her team, this shouldn't be too difficult to achieve. Aika's teams focus mainly on her biggest strength, Freeze. And the best thing about Aika is that you can build your teams with powerful 5-star supports, or just 4-stars, and still get content cleared very quickly. Mainly, you will want to run Aika with another cryo character for energy recharge purposes, a hydro character to apply hydro for Freeze, and an animal character to help Aika deal extra damage with 4 piece spirit as Venerer, an enemy grouping that will get enemies prepared to be hit by Ayaka's burst. Who you should pick is the fun part, because you can't really go wrong with any choice here. You can even use Shenhe, Kaya, Rosaria, Chongyun, or even Diona for the secondary cryo character in your team comp. Mona, Kokomi, Shengcho, or Barbara as Hydro Pliers, and Sucrose, Kazuha, or even Venti for Swirl Reactions. Her most optimal team is Ayaka, Kokomi, Shenhe, and Kazuha. In this team, Ayaka doesn't have to take much field time since her main source of damage is going to be her skill and burst. Kokomi will be the angelic healer and hydro applier to enable the freeze reaction to take place. Shenhe is going to charge Ayaka's burst while also providing good damage from her own skill and burst, but most importantly, she'll provide one of the best buffs any cryo character can give to Ayaka. Kazuha will deal swirl damage and group enemies together while also triggering the four-piece viridescent venerer's artifact set effect. First use Shenhe's skill and burst and Kazuha's skill and burst followed by Ayaka's dash and elemental skill, then Kokomi's skill and her burst, and then finally Ayaka's burst. This team combination is well known to be Ayaka's best and most destructive combination. It also serves as the base for which you can choose to build other teams if you don't have the right characters. For example, if you don't have Kazuha, you can replace him with Sucros. If you don't have Kokomi, you can replace her with Mona or Shingcho. You can also replace Shenhe with Kaya or Rosaria or even Diona. If you choose to run Ayaka in a single target oriented mono cryo team, that's also fine. Just swap the Hydro character with another cryo character that is available and well built. However, it's not preferable in AoE situations since you need Freeze to get the extra crit rate. Whatever units you choose to put into your Ayaka's team, just be sure to consider whether your enemies are freezable or not, since bosses nowadays are not freezable, which can be a hurdle for most Ayaka mains. Next, if you're fighting lightweight enemies who can be grouped very easily, then you could need a good Animo unit like Venti or Kazuha, or possibly even Sucrose. Venti makes it difficult for other units to hit the enemies caught in first, but Ayaka's charge attacks have no issue whatsoever. She can easily dispose of enemies in the washing machine of death if you give her enough field time. Kazuha and Sucrose would fill the role of a grouper and viridescent venerer trigger very well, and if you were fighting ungroupable and unfreezable enemies, then that might lead to more chaotic situations where grouplers and hydro pliers lose some value in the team. As for Ayaka's constellation, we are lucky because she works perfectly fine at C0 and offers a complete and fulfilling kit. At most, they offer some additional utility and of course more damage in some situations, so don't feel baited to go ham on them. C1 reduces the cooldown of her elemental skill by 3 seconds with a 50% chance when a normal or charged attack hits an opponent. This is nice, but in the day-to-day -day gameplay of Ayaka, this won't make a huge difference to you. Her C2 indeed is more powerful, adding two tiny side storms to Ayaka's bursts. They each deal 20% of Ayaka's original burst damage. These storms will split apart to the sides, but are still able to hit large boss monsters. This doesn't only increase the damage they take, but it also applies more cryo. Against smaller enemies, the smaller storms won't be as effective. Overall, this constellation increases Ayaka's damage by 27% compared to C0. C3 adds three levels to Ayaka's burst, which is rather valuable for a character like her that is burst based. C4 will reduce enemy defenses by 30% when Ayaka's burst damage is done. Since the burst is a 5 second duration, you can have up to 11 seconds of time on this effect. It is certainly her most impactful constellation since it allows the entire team to do more damage. And herself, of course. Constellation will add up by 15% more damage to Ayaka personally, and leads to 30-65% to more damage overall compared to C0. C5 adds 3 levels to your elemental skill, nothing too big. And C6 adds an additive damage bonus to Ayaka's charge attacks, which can be used once every 10 seconds. What's remarkable about that is that this bonus will further benefit from Shenho's Icy Quills. This will turn her empowered charge attacks into a mini nuke, and once you can call a C6 Shenho your own, as well as Ayaka C6, 
this combo would be able to spam charge attacks like there is no tomorrow when her burst is on cooldown. At C6, an Ayako will be about 37-75% to 75 stronger without factoring Shenhe into that. Now imagine that with Shenhe. Overall, in conclusion, if you need a good cryo DPS and Ayaka is simply top tier, she and Ganyu still share the throne at the tippity top of the cryo DPS charts and are overall just very high up there when it comes to DPSing in general. I hope this guide helped you out. If so, then leave a like and subscribe and thank you for watching. See you next time. This was Juice, signing out.